Hey guys, we're here today making a tie-dye cheesecake. This is inspired by Monday's episode of Kids Baking Championship, where Duff and Valerie asked the contestants to make tie-dyed cake, more like a traditional sponge cake for a birthday. So here at Food Network, we were inspired to make our own tie-dye cake, but doing a cheesecake instead. As you see, it's kind of a unicorn tie-dye cake with nice pastel colors and glitter and sprinkles and everything. So I'm going to show you how to make this impressive and actually very easy cheesecake right now. So I've already, ahead of time, made my graham cracker crust. So all this is is graham cracker crumbs, melted butter, some salt, mix that together, press it into the bottom of a springform pan, which if you, so a springform pan is one where the sides come off of the bottom. You have this little latch here. That makes it a little easy to remove your cheesecake at the end, which I'll show you. So press that into the bottom, baked at 325 for about 15 minutes until it was nice and golden brown and you could smell it. And um, so that's ready to go, it's cooled. Uh, it was also greased with butter, so make sure it's nice and greased. And then after I baked that, I've um, put some aluminum foil around the sides and the bottom, which is especially helpful if you decide to bake your cheesecake in a water bath, which is a method that can help prevent cracking. So you would take this and you'd put it in uh, a deep pan and then pour some hot water in uh, before you baked. A little tip with that is go ahead and put your, your uh, baking sheet in the oven first, add your cheesecake, and then pour your water in before closing the door. Uh, which is not necessary for this actual recipe, but um, it is a nice trick for any cheesecake that you bake. So already done this ahead of time, gonna set this over here. Now we're gonna get to making our delicious creamy cheesecake filling. This is um, a Food Network recipe that's actually from our uh, chef here at Food Network, his mom, it's her recipe. So we start with some whipped cream cheese, which is a little unconventional. This is the first time I've seen this for a cheesecake recipe, but it helps to make it really light and fluffy and creamy and sort of cuts down on the mixing time because you're already aerated your cream cheese. So this is at room temperature. I'm gonna add to that some sugar. It's just plain granulated sugar. I'm gonna mix that together. You can use a, um, a hand mixer or you could use a stand mixer, whatever you have. You see, because we're using this uh, whipped cream cheese, it's already so fluffy. And you guys, go ahead and comment. Tell me, what, what are your favorite types of cakes to eat? What would you like to turn tie-dye? What desserts? Cheesecakes seem natural to me. That was one of my favorite desserts as a kid. But you could color lots of different desserts. All right, this is getting nice and fluffy. Okay. So next we're adding in more dairy. This is some sour cream. This is a whole container. Again, room temperature. You want all of your ingredients to start at the same temperature. At room temperature, it just helps them mix together better. And also, if it's not super cold, again, it helps uh, prevent cracking. April says pound cake is her favorite. Pound cake, yes. You could totally you could totally do a tie day pattern with pound cake. Rachel says lemon drop cake is her favorite. Mm, lemon, lemon drop. Not lemon meringue, lemon drop. Mm. All right, so get this nice and mixed in. So this is giving us a nice bright white background to mix in our coloring to do the tie dye effect. Now we'll add in some heavy cream. Trisha says angel food cake. Oh, angel food cake. I love angel food cake. Carolee says pudding. Pudding. Oh, that would be fun to do tie-dyed puddings. Um, you could do different flavors, too. Layer them, give them a swirl. So 
So now all of our dairy components are pretty well mixed in. We're going to add our eggs. So this is uh, this has four eggs. I like to mix my eggs into cheesecake by hand because you don't want to overmix it. Another cause of cracking and of getting those like wrinkles on the side of your cheesecake is if you accidentally souffle it. And when you accidentally souffle, that means that you've um, aerated your eggs. So they're going to expand and go up while baking and then collapse as it cools, which is something we want to avoid. We want a nice, smooth, straight top, especially when you have this dramatic tie-dye effect. So to kind of prevent this, I mix my eggs in by hand. So whisk them together. And you want to do this gradually. Don't mix them all in at once either. Want to be gentle. And the, that souffle effect, that can actually affect a lot of different desserts, like uh, cookies, for instance. Sometimes you get, the, get chocolate chip cookies that have that like kind of wrinkled, wrinkles around the sides of them. That's the same thing. You mixed your eggs in too much. Christina says, awesome info about the eggs. That has to be what I've always been doing wrong. <laughs> These are little tips and tricks. Sometimes you never know. Okay, more egg. Teresa says, cheesecake addict here. Oh, me too. I, I love cheesecake. <laughs> A little hard because I'm lactose intolerant, but you know, that's what those pills are for. Rachel says, thanks for the tip on adding eggs. Did not know that. Heart emoji. All right. So our last little bit of eggs. Uh, Vanessa asked, does it make it more fluffy with the storing of the eggs? Um, you're, no, we're not really making this more fluffy. Um, if anything, at this point, we're trying not to aerate. Um, your fluffiness came from your whipped cream cheese and from the creaming of the cream cheese, all the, all the dairies together with the sugar. At this point, we're trying not to aerate. We're trying just to gently mix in the eggs. Perry Ann asks if this is a baked cheesecake. This is a baked cheesecake, yes, because we just added raw eggs. So we will need to bake this. It's more traditional in that sense. So now I'm going to add to this some vanilla extract and juice of half of a lemon. You could also add some zest if you wanted to, but um, I have to not to since we're, I didn't want any zest visible with these tie-dye effect. Nicole says she's lactose intolerant too and the pills really help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank goodness for those pills. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know, and you guys let me know too, have you ever tried making a cheesecake that didn't have dairy in it, anything alternative. I've, a lot of times viewers have interest in that, so maybe some of you have some tips and tricks. Um, a lot of people want to know where they can get the recipe. The recipe, there should be a link above. It's on foodnetwork.com. It is actually a recipe that is our uh, chef here at Food Network. It's a recipe from his mom. So this is what he had growing up, which is kind of fun. He was very excited when he knew that I was going to be making it today. All right, so now for the fun part. So that's your nice, traditional, plain cheesecake batter. Now we need to color it. I went with these fun, pastel, kind of whimsical colors, because that's very in trend right now, the whole unicorn trend. I really like it. But you could do the colors of the rainbow. You could do your favorite colors. I know there's a big game coming up soon. You could use your favorite team colors. Mine would be red and black. Mm -hmm. um, do as many colors as you want. So you want to just distribute your cheesecake filling amongst all your bowls. A big ladle like this is helpful. Uh, Patricia asks, do you have to put in the lemon juice? Trisha, you do not have to put in the lemon juice. That's totally up to you. It's a flavoring. Um, I think it's nice. It adds a little bit of balance, a little bit of tartness. Um, it's not going to be, it's such a small amount of lemon, you're not really going to taste it. 
it's really more just to add some balance with all the sweetness and how, um, you know, it's a little fatty. It's, there's a lot of dairy in here. You want something in there to cut it just a little bit. Rachel says, go Falcons. Yeah, go Falcons. <laughs> I'm from Atlanta. Um, all right. Okay, so now we have our, so our cheesecake filling distributed amongst our four bowls. So here I have some gel food coloring. You can also use the regular kind you get from the grocery store, but in general, if you're going to buy food coloring, gel is preferred. So I'm going to do some pink here. Do some yellow. some purple and some turquoise. Give them a nice stir. See, look how nice and vibrant that color is. It's from the gel. If you use the more liquidy food coloring, you just need to add a lot more. Kanata says the red and black would be a good spin-off for Halloween cheesecake. Yes, it would. Red and black would be good for that. It's also my college team's colors, too. And um, Adrian asked, how much food coloring do you use? I kind of eyeballed these, to be honest, because um, I made these cheesecakes yesterday as well. It kind of went off how I wanted them to look. I just did a good, like, healthy two squeezes. Um, as always, I say when you're coloring something, start gradual. Just put a little in, stir it in, see what it looks like. Kind of depends on how you want your cheesecake to look. And just keep adding. Um, or if you really want a particular shade, you can always take a little bit of your batter to the side in a small bowl and color it, get the exact, you know, a darker version of the shade you want, and then add it back in. That's, that's really more if you're like mixing two colors together. Um, uh, Ginger wants to, to know where you get the gel food coloring. You can get gel food coloring at um, craft supply stores, uh, cake decorating stores. You can get them online. They're not, they're not very hard to find. Kelly says gel food coloring is the best. Yes, it is the best. All right, and then our turquoise. I think this one's my favorite color out of all of these. Um, LA wants to know why you're not using a whisk. Oh, I'm, again, I'm trying not to aerate my batter because I've added the eggs already. And one of the ways you can cause cracking and the wrinkles on the side of your cheesecake is if you accidentally aerate your eggs, causing them to souffle. So they rise up and they collapse. So I'm just trying to fold in my coloring at this point. I'm not really trying to introduce any more air. All right, so now we have our, our beautiful colors. And here comes the fun part. Now, we get to make them into our swirly, fun tie-dye pattern. So I have here some scoops. I'm just going to go through and just give some nice scoops. And this is just, this would be great to do with kids. It's fun. You kind of just go with it. There's no rules. And layer them on top of each other a little bit. Stephanie says, great Easter cheesecake. This is a great Easter cheesecake. That wasn't, uh, actually wasn't done on purpose, but it is very seasonal for Easter coming up, you know, not too, not too far away. So what is, would be very impressive to serve to, um, if you're having people over for that holiday. Turquoise 
it's really pretty. Thanks, Ash. I like the turquoise a lot, too. Nice and vibrant. You can use the same technique to make a traditional sponge cake like you serve at a birthday party, which is on Kids Baking Championship, um, kind of what some of the contestants did. So, you know, this works very well with the cheesecakes. It's so bright and white and it doesn't really brown in the oven. But you can still use the same, same method to do a regular cake or somebody mentioned pudding earlier. You can make, a, make some pudding, some vanilla pudding, color it, do it like this, layer it and put it in a trifle dish and do that fun tie-dye swirl. I mean, this technique, you can, you can play around with it. We could do an entire series on tie-dye. <laughs> we could do an entire series on tie-dye if we wanted to. So Leah asked, do you just keep layering the colors until it's all gone? Yep, keep layering the colors until you're out of batter or until you are, have filled up your pan. So here we have, I'd say we're at a good point now to stop. You don't want to you can get pretty close to the top. It's not going to rise much, especially because we were careful to try to keep our um, eggs from souffleing. I mean, you don't want to overfill it too much. So now I'm going to take a skewer. You could use you could use a knife. You could use a popsicle stick. You know, whatever you have. And now here's the fun part. Again, this would be great to do with kids. You can just go nuts with it. There's no rules. And if you have like, I have this big patch of turquoise, I kind of want to get a little, little yellow in there. You can just add a little. You want to make sure your colors are all distributed throughout. Ronetta wants to know if the colors will bleed. The colors will not bleed. And that's kind of what's so fun about this technique and about doing it in a cheesecake. As long as you don't like, you know, shake it all around as you're taking it to the oven, which you shouldn't do anyways, um, it'll stay like this. So here we go. Look how pretty that is, and how easy it was. Like this was not so impressive, and this didn't take me much time at all. So now I'm going to go bake this. As I mentioned before, you can bake it in a water bath if you want. The technique for this particular cheesecake recipe um, doesn't use a water bath. But that's something I like to do when I bake cheesecakes. Um, it helps, again, prevent cracking. And so the way you would do a water bath is I would put this into a roasting pan or into a fairly deep pan, put it into, you know, into the rack on the oven with the door open, and then you pour in some hot water up to about right here. You just have to be really careful when you take it out when it's hot. So baking this, bake it at 325 for about an hour and 20 minutes. And then you just turn the oven off, leave the door closed, and let it sit for another hour, which again helps prevent cracking, helps keeping it from get too brown. It'll set in the middle. It's another nice trick to making sure that your cheesecake comes out great. So put it on a sheet tray. So here, if we're doing a water bath, we'd fill it up. I'd probably want something a little deeper than this, but fill it up to there. And this goes in the oven. So I can show you. I made one earlier. I'll show you how to take it out of the springform pan. So here's this. This is one that I baked yesterday. Also, after you bake them before taking them out of the pan or serving them, you do want to let it sit in your fridge overnight. You want it to get nice and cold. So this is something to do ahead of time. Don't, you know, see this and be like, I'm going to make it for my party tonight. You know, make it for your party tomorrow. All right, and. So let's say I just took this out of the oven, took the foil off the sides. Before I put it in the fridge overnight to cool, you want to take a knife or an, an offset or something and kind of go around the sides. Just to help it from being stuck to the sides again so you don't get that cracking and it doesn't, you know, it will shrink in a little on its own naturally. So this is our spring form pan, which means that the bottom comes off from the sides. So that's what this handy little latch is for. This looks great, right? Now, if you're bold and daring, you can try to take it off of the bottom. Since I'm doing this live, I'm going to just leave it on that bottom, and I think that's perfectly fine. Now, this is beautiful and impressive on its own, but I like to take things to the next level. 
So to do that, I'm going to add a little bit of edible disco dust, which is glitter. So I have some here. This is something you can also get at a, a baking supply store or find online. And a little bit goes a very long way. So if you buy some, it's a nice little investment. Got some on a brush. Just be careful because once you get this glitter on you, it's not coming off. All right. And then another finishing touch around the sides. The sides are a little bit sticky. So we're going to put on there, we're going to stick on some confetti sprinkles. Because who doesn't love sprinkles? I'm not going to do the entire cheesecake because then we'll be here all day doing that. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. You can take your favorite sprinkles. I like these confetti ones, but you could use jimmies, you could use chocolate sprinkles, you know, whatever, whatever suits your fancy, whatever matches the colors that you choose to use. And now after all this work, I want to cut myself a slice. Now another trick with slicing cheesecake is a hot knife does help. So at home, I'd probably dip it in some hot water or use my gas stove, turn on the flame and then run the knife through to get it hot. But here at Food Network, I'm going to use a blowtorch to heat up my knife. See, even the knife looks beautiful. Huh. Wait, can we see it again? <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. So. Fingers crossed this slice comes out all right. Yeah. Look how fun that is. The marbling goes all the way through. It's a beautiful tie-dye. and a lot on top, a nice dollop of whipped cream. Take a bite. Mm. Tastes magical. So go make yourself a tie-dye cheesecake inspired by Kids Baking Championship in your favorite colors, or you can go the unicorn route like I did. Thanks so much, Sarah. You're welcome.